The general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Yi Adibu, has spoken against Nigeria borrowing money from foreign nations. Speaking at his church special Thanksgiving service, a clergyman revealed that the foreign countries who want to keep lending money and supplying arms to Nigeria are only pretending to be friends. Adewe also lamented the state of hunger in Nigeria. He said there are people who want this nation to choke to death and we read all about it in the newspapers that money meant for the development of this nation is swallowed up even after seeing that the people are hungry, he said. Some of these countries who claim to be our friends want to hug us because they want us to come and borrow money. They want us to borrow money so much that we would never be able to repay. They keep on saying, come and borrow money. We are your friends. The Bible makes it clear that the borrower would be the servant of the lender. And some of these people who pretend to be our friends manufacture guns and bullets. They rejoice when you have problems so that you can come and buy their guns and bullets and use them to kill your own people, he said. Okay. <laughs> um, believe you me, these are the things people have been saying. I think he's beginning to speak out. So those who have been saying that, oh, she don't say anything, she don't do this or that. You know, because some people come out and say, I think there was a time when uh, Idris Abdul Karim and some other people, when the whole thing was just going, the killing was just doing, people, they came out and say, why are you guys not speaking? And at the end of the day, who are the people affected? The same, the so-called members. The members are not different from Nigerian people. They are the same Nigerian people. So if people are being, people are not happy, do you think they will even remember to come to anywhere? You, you guys have influence to be able to speak because when other people are speaking, it will be as if, oh, these people do not know what they're talking about. And it's, it's out of, it was out of respect. Even then, people started castigating, castigating, uh, castigating all those people who were protesting that they redeem all the pastors, they should speak. It is not only when they close churches, they will start speaking. When there's pandemic, it's not as if maybe nobody can even close church. That is what I really believe. Some of these, they are supporters will start coming and be saying touch not my anointed touch not my anointed and this you are anointed you are talking about they are well secured when they are moving they are moving in entourage with security people but you don't have such things they are supposed to speak for you they are supposed to speak on your behalf because this all, all, all this uh, all this uh, government or politicians they'll see they respect them so when it's coming out from that place of the pulpit they will know they will, even if they don't have fear because these people they don't have fear you know that the only thing that can cause them to be afraid all these politicians it is when they do anything and they take them to court but you know that they are not even afraid of the court because they are the ones in charge of the court but they all most of them they fear they fear god once something really once something drastic happens they begin to run etta skater that is just a, a, a these politicians for you so you have to speak from the altar you know when you are even making your point they will speak. They are not going to be insulting anybody. But what we have termed as insult in this country, somebody saying the truth, they will say, oh, it's insulting, it's uh, downgrading somebody, it's whatever, it's indiscipline and all of that. But at the end of the day, you are the one suffering. One of us and will come out. All of them, everybody, even including all of us, we have contributed in one way or the other to the... A uh, situation we find ourselves in this country, irrespective whether you agree to that or not, everybody has contributed in one way or the other. You know whether in in good way or in a bad way. Even Obasanjo will come out and begin to speak. They will say, "Oh yes, you've done this, you've done that." All of them they've contributed to what we are we are experiencing in this country. And those who are, are supporters, ordinary Nigerians, you are part of the problems because when you are supposed to speak, you'll be defending those politicians again that are maltreating you. So in one way or the other, we have contributed. So what we have really found ourselves, the position we've really found ourselves in this country. So when Obasan just talks, they will say, ah, forget it. Oh, you cost it, you cost it. Believe you me, it's not going to be affected. As an ex-president, he has all he, all it takes to secure himself. The government, the, the government will still provide for him because it is in the constitution. Because they are always being paid even after they have finished their their their, their work as being a a, a president or whatever position they've had in the past. So they will still be secured. It is you and I that are ordinary people. Nobody to secure us. Is it not the same police people? People are talking about answers, answers. They are the ones that will see intimidate the masses. Police are there to protect us, but majority of them, they've been assigned to all those big men. Or if you have money, you can, you just talk to IG of police. They will, they will give you, they protect themselves. That you say, that's why you see all those uh, pastors, they call themselves Jews. They go with entourage, they go with uh, all these uh, security people. So they need to speak. 
because when they speak, they are speaking on your behalf. So it's beginning to speak. These are the things people have been talking about. Now that he's speaking, you will not hear his supporters now. They will say, yes, it is, it is the right thing. It is the right thing. Ah, gullibility is a very bad thing. You can't just be gullible, gullible for nothing. Just on, on duly because of a sentiment and all of that. At the end of the day, the people are the ones that will still suffer it. So what he has said is not different from what people have been saying. Whether they will listen and if they will not hear. For those uh, those the so-called leaders, the so-called politicians, people are speaking, ordinary people are speaking, religious leaders that, uh, that care to speak, they are speaking. And if they refuse to hear, just wait for their hand because the people themselves are, are speaking, they are speaking through their votes, uh, through their protests, because even if you are speaking at home, nobody will hear you. But the only way these governments or these politicians or the so-called leaders, the only way they can hear you is to come out and protest. But they are still intimidating people. They don't want people to come out to protest because they don't want to be exposed. But thank God for social media. If you think that the people cannot go physically to protest, they can protest online. Unless you want to cut off our the media, we want to cut off everything. You want to cut the country away from the outside world, which is going to be very, very difficult. They wanted to try it by bringing uh, what is called a hate speech and what have you. So, coming back to what Adiboye has said, that is just the truth. That is just the truth. Well, you see, just knowing now, I think it's part of the government. APC gave uh, ROCCG slots of VP and they voted for the party. It's too late uh, to cry, okay? I don't think some people really agree with the statement of this particular person that uh, <laughs> they gave uh, ROCCG a slot of VP. No, do you think it's so? Well, you are entitled to your opinion. Just pray for the country. It's for our own good. No wonder you cannot say, okay, this one is just they are trying to insult themselves. Eh? But it is true. It's part of APC government who protested against the past government. Uh, his pastor is the vice president, which I don't know exactly what he's doing there. He has been so quiet all this while. And so a pastor, why this country is drowning? I support you, but it's not late if all these pastors who have eaten dodo and couldn't say ududu, which is the truth, can repent and cry out against this government with one voice. Yes, it is better if they all start crying out now. Well, God will surely expose every evil hidden agenda of this country called Nigeria in Jesus' name. Some people are just uh, running their mouths like taps, water against, like tap waters against man of God. When Pastor Dibuye refused to speak, you people were accusing him. He was too silent. Now he comes out to speak. You are still accusing him, uncivilized fellow. Well, too late is one of those that brought this demonic government. Why is crying now? When we were shouting, they thought because uh, we are from the south south. Everyone has seen the fire now. Uh, don't mind them. They will get tired because you are a man of Satan. Well, uh, but it is true. Only if Buari will hear. I don't even know the type of a, a national assembly we have in this country. They are only there representing their pockets. If not, how will they allow Buari to borrow all your all our future out from China? The ones they borrowed, what did they do with it? Don't just go there. The National Assembly, the man has taken position and he has told Nigerians and there's nothing anybody can do about it. He has already said it, that anything Buari is bringing is for the betterment of the country. So they are not going to oppose him. They are not there to fight him. They are there to work with him. And they believe that whatever plans he has, in whichever way, whatever way, is for the good of the people. So guys, let's hear your opinion. Leave your comment below respectfully and let us know your thoughts.